Welcome to Kiss the Reviews. I'm Armando. That's Corey. And today we're doing 2000s Love and Basketball. Before we get started, if you want to follow me or Corey on Twitter, you could follow me at Junior D's. You could follow Corey at Idle Poncho. And Corey has a message for everybody as well. A message. That makes it seem like there's a warning. This isn't a PSA or anything. Um, but we do have some exciting news. Um, <clears throat> first off, you guys have been wiling the fuck out when it comes to requests. You guys have went ham, and we love it. Here's the problem, though. I am I'm, I handle the request guy. I'm the request guy. And, um, yeah, that doesn't really suit my lazy uh, nature. So <clears throat> we had to find some way to correct this horrible problem of me working about an hour or two a day on your requests. The best way we found to do that was a suggestion by one of our awesome viewers. And uh, uh, they suggested that we set up a PayPal account and start taking some cash donations for uh, your requests. So that's exactly what we did. Um, link is below. It'll also be on the show page uh, for every episode moving forward. But uh, basically, the larger the dollar amount, the faster we will accommodate your request. <clears throat> Not saying you have to do that. If you have requests out there, totally fine. We will get to them. We still have an order going about how we're doing it. But again, if there's something you are just absolutely dying to see us request, throw us some cash and uh, we will get it done. This is America and we are capitalists. America. America. Cool. So let's dive into this. We'll start with the cast of Love and Basketball. This film stars Santa Lathan as Monica Wright, Omar Epps as Quincy McCall, Dennis Haysbert as Zeke McCall, Alfre Woodard as Camille Wright, and I have to mention Gabrielle Union as Shawnee. Dude, there's so many people in this movie. Yes. Yes. So many people, like, we could spend this entire episode just talking about the cast in this movie. It's fantastic. I, I had to trim down the cast in the, this film stars. Yeah. Um, but can I, I'm just going to say this just up front, right? Uh, okay. Lo love this movie. I mm -hmm. haven't seen this movie literally since it came out. And yeah. I don't know if you remember this, but Omar Epps' character... Quincy mm -hmm. is kind of a bitch in this movie. <laughs> is he not? Yeah. Am I mistaken? I love this movie, but his character is frustrating. Yeah, uh, very much so, which tells me uh, two things. Uh, one, if this movie were made today, Kevin Durant's little sensitive ass would be playing Quincy. <laughs> 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 and two... Um, I think we were just assholes as teenagers also. So we were able to relate to Quincy a little bit more where in this, in nowadays we're just like, dude, you're a bitch. Like grow yeah. up. Yeah. Real world problems, motherfucker. Exactly. I will say this though. His character made me feel a lot better about some of the white privilege we've identified in other movies because this really took away white privilege and just made it kind of like, eh, if you're a, if you grow up with money, you're a dick. <laughs> it's just typically white people tend to grow up with more money, ergo more privilege. Yeah. Not saying white privilege doesn't exist. I'm just saying Quincy grew up with money and he's a dick. Yeah. Yeah. If you grow up with a little bit of money, the more money, the bigger the dick you are. That's yes. just I think that's how the rule goes. <laughs> I think so. But this film opens and starts in 1981 uh, when a young Monica moves to new neighborhood. Some boys are playing basketball, Quincy being one of them, and they mistake her for another boy because of her hat. After she asks to play, they bust her balls and she starts schooling them on the court. This is such a great opening, too. I love it, the dynamic. The kids were being yes. kids. They yep. acted like normal kids. There wasn't anything like... Hey, man, she's a woman. Everybody, let's respect her, please. Yes. Calm down, buddy. That's a lady. It's like, yeah. no, 
you were that age and a girl wanted to play basketball with you or any sport with you or even tag, yeah. you're like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. You don't need that shit. Go well, on and play and, with your dolls. And Quincy gets gets a little butthurt here because Monica is actually good. And yes. she's schooling him, the rest of the dudes. And so he fouls her hard as shit into the grass and she gets hurt. Look, uh, we're just going to start here. Hi, kids. Uncle Corey. First PSA of the day. Um, when you're getting schooled by somebody, don't take your frustrations out by hurting them. It doesn't make you a better player. It makes you a fucking bitch, which we know Quincy is. Yes. But don't be like, you're going to fought, you're gonna see a line here or a trend happening in this show where it's, don't be like Q. Q's a dick. Yes. Take your ass whooping like a man and then go the fuck home and work harder to be better than that person that just beat the shit out of you. Later that night, after trying to one-up Monica when her and her mother come over, we catch Quincy watching her through his window. The next morning, he asks her to be his girl. And three seconds later, they're rolling around in the grass and fighting. And ah, yes. young love. Yeah, they got married real quick. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I thought that scene was adorable. Like, do you want to be my girl? And like the expectations of what they thought they were supposed to do. And... Yes. I guess we can play ball and ride to school together. When you get mad at me, I got to give you flowers. Dude, I love that scene. The little girl that played Monica in this was adorable. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. She was great. And they both, did, and again, we've talked about kids in movies. Mm -hmm. um, both of these kids did an awesome job in this like yes. first chapter of the movie. We then, after this, flash forward to 1988, both Monica and Quincy are now in high school. Monica gets taken out of a game and benched after a technical foul for losing her head in a game. Cut to Quincy at his game, and it's obvious that he's a baller. It's also obvious that Monica is still into him. Yes, and we have to rewind just a little bit because we skipped over the introduction of Dennis Haysbert when they're children. Yes. And how he's an NBA player. I got to tell you, yo, this motherfucker is cool as shit. <laughs> like old school, cool as shit. Yes. And my favorite is when they were kids uh, and she gets pissed off at Quincy. Monica starts ripping on his dad and she's like, well, your dad ain't even that good. He plays for the worst team in the league. Like. That was my that was my favorite because he's like Quincy's oh, okay. trying to be this badass and my dad's a pro ball player and she's like yeah and he plays for the worst team like go fuck fuck off I love that that which, was awesome which was such an original kid fight too because that's yes. how kids argue yes absolutely. <clears throat> especially like just that whole this ball player sucks or this ball player sucks like let me let me uh, uh, dispel any illusions for you out there. The worst player in the league, in any, any league, league you want to play in, is better than you will ever be. Yes. Period. None of them suck. Brian Scalabrini will take you to the court <laughs> and fuck <laughs> you up. You went Brian Scalabrini on everybody. I'm a Celtics fan. What are you going to do? That's awesome. Quincy then gives Monica a ride home after his game. He mm -hmm. explains to her that she isn't getting recruited because of her shitty attitude on the court. And that night, Quincy goes next door to Monica's house to sleep on the floor because his parents are fighting again. It's that that whole relationship is like a, a B plot to in this movie. Yeah, I really like that dynamic, though, uh, they set up because they make it seem at first like Q's kind of a dick. He doesn't really care about her. Like since that fight, they've, they've been neighbors, but they've also kind of went their separate ways. Yeah. <clears throat> and it almost seems like he's kind of writing her about being a hothead and talking that shit. But then you see, they also have that connection, that real relationship where, yep. you know, two teenagers that live next door to each other of the opposite sex. One's just going to go sleep on the floor because his parents are fighting again. Like that was really cool. They, the little layers they put in this movie are fantastic. They they are great. And this this obviously is one of those layers. And you can like Quincy is putting on airs that he doesn't really care about her. But 
He goes to her games. He's always in the background watching. The yes. in the next scene, um, when Monica's sister uh, gets her a date to the school dance or whatever, you see them two constantly eyeballing each other the whole time. Like he sees her in a dress for like the first time ever, and mm. he's like, "Damn!" And so you you kind of see that they're they start building those little layers of that relationship. Like they actually do really care right. about each other. Yes, um, very much. So. But after Monica's sister tells her that she got her a date for the school dance, she goes to her championship game. Mm -hmm. There's a recruiter there from USC, and this is basically her last chance. And they lose the game after her foul, and she misses the last shot to win the game. We always talk about how they shoot sports scenes. Yes. In these movies. And sometimes they're janky. Sometimes, you know, you have that uh, the audio uh, background dialogue that's added in afterwards and sounds really horrible. Yeah. I loved the first person view and her talking to herself and thinking her way through that. You just need to get come the, on. Get the, you just need to you need this. I thought that was so cool. And as someone that played basketball, and I think most people who play sports, they would understand this or have done it themselves. That's what happens. Like that shit's yeah. going through your head as you're getting ready to do the thing. So I loved this. I thought that was one of the well, cooler shots we've seen recently. Yeah. And not only that, like if you go back to uh, the program, because mm -hmm. that's where a lot of this stuff, the chinsy stuff came up because just how it was shot. Football is hard to shoot anyway. Yeah. But the, the players that they had play, both the men and the women, the actual basketball being played, defense shoot like all of it was shot really well and was believable and i'm yes. actually glad they got a character to play monica who a had some handles and b had some like uh like muscle tone to her like mm -hmm. she's a she's a ball player you know what i mean like they oh, didn't, very much so. yeah. it, this wasn't like fucking necessary roughness where you you grab some supermodel who can't kick a ball into the ocean and she's the fucking kicker. And it's just right. horribly not believable. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm glad they went this route. They did a great job with all the action shots and the basketball shots in this movie. Yes. And two things to add to this. Uh, one, uh, the program, since you brought it up as a side note, uh, is the only movie where Omar Epps in the 90s is not named Q, apparently. <laughs> And uh, as far as Kathy Ireland and necessary roughness goes, not being able to kick a football, she kicked me once in the balls real fucking hard. So I'm just saying, maybe she's not this, you know, superstar uh, uh, kicker like Cario Santos, but she kicked the shit out my nuts once. And hey. let me tell you something, it felt like they went through the fucking uprights. Relax, big guy. Sometimes restraining orders aren't necessary. <laughs> <laughs> Swift kick to the nuts gets the point across. After the, the championship game, they're at the dance. Everyone's surprised at how good Monica looks, inclu including Q. And Q and Monica keep staring at each other throughout the whole dance while they're with their dates. And when they get home, Monica gets home. She finds the letter from USC in her bedroom. She calls out the window to Q to come over and has Q open and read the letter. So he gives her the good news that they're recruiting her. He lets her know that he's going there to USC as well. He goes in for a hug here to congratulate her, and she kisses him, which leads to them making out in the grass. And then she invites him into her bedroom, and they make some sweet, sweet love. I actually thought that was a really good scene for uh, uh, losing of the virginity. That seemed um, about as realistic for an experienced guy and an unexperienced woman. Like that was right there with almost like fast times at Ridgemont High. You know what I mean? Yes, like they just, absolutely. Absolutely. But then after this, you cut to 1988-89. Monica's at USC. She isn't doing awesome at practice. The coach is riding her. Her teammates are hard on her. Q is also a freshman, but he's a phenom for the Trojans, and he's like big man on campus here. Hi, kids. Coach Corey here. Uh, a couple quick suggestions for you uh, if you are an athlete. One, when your coach is riding you, that's a good thing. 
stick with it, shut the fuck up, and just do it. Yep. And two, if a player at your same position is making kind of like offhanded jokes about, ha ha, you're not going to take my position, they're scared you're going to take their position. <laughs> Just do you, listen to what your coach says, and don't get distracted by the bullshit on the outside. Because that's what gets Monica caught up here for a little bit. Yes. Is she worries about what everybody else is doing instead of her damn self. Her and Q are still together. And we also get a cool game of strip basketball here as well. And Q does the right thing here. I'm not going to say he'd necessarily let her win because it's strip basketball. There are no losers. But again, if your girl challenges you to a game of strip something or your partner challenges you to a game of strip something, let them win. You're going to get naked with them anyway. Yes. Just let it happen. It's fun. Yes. It's a good time. Good time had by all. Yeah. If you get competitive playing strip something, you're missing the point. <laughs> the season then starts and we get a montage of Q being the man. Monica busting her ass just to get some respect in the locker room. Q's dad is also trying to keep him in school and not go to the NBA right away. He wants him to stay in school, get his education. He tells Q he's going through some shit with a paternity case, but it's not true. Yep. And Q goes home to see his mom after he finds out. And she shows him pictures of his dad and the mistress and all that. So Q gets pissed off. He leaves. This is where Q becomes a completely unlikable character. Yes, absolutely. Because Q and Monica are talking about the situation in the in the stands of you know one of the practice fields or whatever. He gets mad at her because her coach has the team on curfew. She can't stay with him because. She's like, dude, I'm on curfew. I can't get in trouble. I'm already on thin ice. Like, I'm a baller. You're a baller. If anybody should get this, it's you. And he does not get it. And he gets pissed. And all of a sudden, their relationship's in jeopardy because she wants to play basketball at fucking USC. Yeah, this is, <clears throat> this is I think, one of those weird dynamics where a lot of men think a woman is supposed to be there in the relationship and they drop everything to take care of your little sensitive ass. And that ain't the case, man. She worked She worked fucking hard to get there. Yeah. And to think she's going to let that drop because, and I'm not saying he wasn't going through some shit. That's tough. Oh, no, absolutely. But at the same time, to also just completely disregard everyone else's feelings around you because – your dad lied to you that he cheated on your mom. Hot tip, shit face. Everybody's dad lies to their mom, uh, lies to their kids when they cheated on their mom. <laughs> That's what they do. Yes, absolutely. Like you're not special in this. You're not unique. This happens. It sucks and it's horrible, but it happens. And you yeah. gotta fucking. This is where I think men, by and large, have the biggest room for evolutionary growth is just talk about your goddamn feelings. Don't be so fucking hidden. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because everything he does here is the opposite of what you should do. Like, the next half of this show is going to be Armando just going, don't do that, and the music yeah. playing behind us. So you, you cut to Q here playing like shit because he's got personal shit going on, mm -hmm. and Monica, Monica getting to play, and, and she's excelling. Monica yeah. then gets the news from the coach that she's going to be the starting point guard because the starting point guard ahead of her got hurt. And this coach, I will say this coach has been my favorite coach in all of our sports movies. Yes. And by that, I mean, she's so realistic. She's very she realistic. Like coach, talks like a coach. Yeah. Everything about her was a basketball coach in this movie. Absolutely. And she even, you know, says, you think I go horse for a player with no potential? When I ignore you, then you worry. That is the most coach thing ever. Oh, exactly. So, but at a party that night, because she's all excited that she got the starting gig, Q is drunk at this party, and he's an asshole here because he played poorly. Monica then sees him with another girl and confronts him, and he gives her the... Nah, I got curfew. And then he leaves. 
All right, here's my turn. Okay. <laughs> here's a don't do that. Okay, folks. Hi, everybody. If you're in a relationship and the other person in the relationship you're kind of mad at for whatever reason, even if it's a bullshit reason like Q's mad here, if your initial, re- just, just don't, your initial reaction should not be, I'm just going to go start talking to another person, another guy, another girl, just to make them pissed off because I, I need them to feel the way I'm feeling right now. And the only way to do that is to go talk to another girl or another guy. Don't do that. That's bullshit. And that's that's like, that's the most childish, re- childish reaction you could have in this situation. Nah, I got curfew. Oh, dude, like this is borderline psychopath behavior. I'm I'm really upset because my dad cheated on my mom. I'm in college, P.S. So what I'm going to do as a halfway grown ass man is drink my feelings away and then pout around you while I talk to a bunch of who was who are just nothing but gold diggers. Like, are you fucking crazy? Dude, he drove me insane the yes. rest of this movie. Q then gets to his room after this whole ordeal, and his dad's there, and they get into it. He tells his yep. dad that he's going to he's gonna drop out after the season and go pro. After this, Monica swings by to see Q, like, the next day, and the other chick he was talking to at the party shows up. And Q acts like a complete dick here. So no. him him feeling still hurt. And Monica bounces as she should. Let's let let's say this. You you've made the initial mistake that Q makes at the party. Oh, my feelings are hurt. I'm gonna talk to this chick and I'm gonna piss off my girlfriend because feelings. Don't don't do this. Don't continue that behavior. You've already made the mistake. Don't continue that behavior into the next day. Don't do that. Making making decisions that uh, affect the rest of your life. Yes. When you're emotional, don't make life-altering decisions because they are almost every single time wrong. Absolutely. Every time. You have to have a clear fucking frame of mind when you're like, eh, fuck college. I'm going pro in the NBA. Yeah. Why? Because you want to hurt your dad? In the span of 48, in the span of 48 hours, he decides (laughs) that he's going to drop out of school and uh, announce himself for the NBA draft, break up with his girlfriend, mess around with some whores, and get into a fight with his dad and basically tell his dad to go kick rocks. Like yes. that's, that's a big 48 hours and there's a lot of mistakes made and it's all based on emotion. Dude, he needs, you know what he needs? He needs a jerk and a cry. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm telling was, you, I'm just going to, I'm going to make this a PSA. Hi kids. Uncle Corey here. Uh, if you have trouble with your emotions, if you, you know, you can't express them effectively, you don't, you feel weird trying to talk about them, all that shit, tuck yourself into a dark room and give yourself a jerk and a cry. It's fine. Nobody will notice it. It's very little cleanup. And I promise you, you are going to feel so good when it's done. <laughs> Take and I know this advice. because not only am I a member of the Jerk and Cry Club, I'm also the president. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And hey, you know what? Light some candles too, man. Just, just, just get this. Get the whole thing. You got. You got to yep. get the. You got to get everything. All the senses going. So set a mood and just let it flow, man. If you know whatever makes you cry too. Like once the jerk's done, fuck it. If Tony Stark dying gets you every time, watch that motherfucker kick the bucket one last time and just let the fucking waterworks <laughs> go. Fast forward now to 1993. We're in Barcelona, Spain. Monica's now playing ball in Europe. She's balling out. And she also runs into her college teammate uh, in the finals, and they start to hang out. Played by young Kamala Harris. (laughs) So cut back to Q, who's now in the NBA. He's apparently bounced around the league. He's playing with the Lakers now. 
and he blows out his knee after a dunk during a game. Now, yep. we're going to stop here. I hated this scene. Not that it wasn't acted well, not that the basketball didn't look real or whatever. Everything was shot and, and acted well. Mm -hmm. It's just not going to happen. Like, I'd rather have it in this scene happen where he's like driving to the hoop and he goes to make a cut. And how many, you're, I love basketball. You're a huge basketball fan. How many people have you seen blow their ACL out after a dunk? It's been few and far between, but it has that's, happened. It has happened, but that that's all I'm saying. Like, Sure. No, I get you. There's like a better way. He could have been undercut by another guy or something exactly. could have happened. Exactly. He, I would have liked something personally, more. Personally, he should have got shoved uh, under the basket like he did to Monica back in the day and hit his fucking head or his knee on the big goddamn pole or something. That would have been cool. That would have been a, a cool scene. But fucking yeah. karma, bitch. <laughs> exactly. That's that's what I would have rather seen. The next scene is him in the hospital. His dad goes to see him there and he gives him some advice. They get into it just a little bit and we finally realize here where Q gets his like bullshit reactions to stuff because his dad walks in, he doesn't want to talk. His dad's like, I want to talk and I'm going to give you some advice. He gives him some advice. Q looks like he's listening. And then his dad's mm -hmm. like, all right, cool. I'll see you in another five years. And he just fucking dips. Like, like bro, it got, a, it got, a, it got a little too, there was a little too many feelings going on and in, in this room. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave. Cause it got, just a hair confrontation. Yeah, that definitely seemed to be his boat. Um, actually, fuck it. Hi, kids. Uncle Corey here. Uh, if if you have divorced from your partner and you have a kid that's in the mix, especially at some point in time, like when that kid's grown the fuck up and has moved on with their life somewhat as an adult, get over the divorce. I know you've been hurt. I know it happens. It's fucking horrible. I've been through it. But at the same time, I mean, I celebrated mine, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 it's horrible. Like at some point where there's, where uh, Dennis Haysbert and Q's mom are still beefing at the hospital, it's like, fuck, dude, get over it. If you're truly happy, like she says, he says, how have you been? She, she says, happy. She walks over to her new husband. Cool. Then why the fuck are you still giving me shit? It's been five years. You've moved on. You've never been happier. You're fucking married to what looks to be Sugar Ray Leonard. <laughs> what the fuck am I doing here? Why are you still giving me shit? Exactly. Just you gotta exactly. let that stuff go sometimes, man. Yeah. It's not worth it. Yeah. And after this whole scene, the next day, Monica goes to see Q at the hospital as well. They're talking. Q's fiance shows up as they're speaking and Monica leaves here. Monica then goes home and tries to get some advice from her mom on the whole situation. And of course it ends up in a fight and her mom smacks the shit out of her here. This is a great on scene smack. There's so many times you get the open hand smack in a movie and it just doesn't, it doesn't play. You know, who's not playing is Monica's fucking mom here. No, no. She smacks She's the ever-loving shit out of her. Like a man knowing his woman's home cooking and ironing his drawers. Damn it! It was a great scene. Uh, it was acted so well. It's probably my favorite scene in the whole thing because I think this argument is why the term come to Jesus talk was invented. <laughs> yes. Because, good God, do both of them come to Jesus real quick. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. And speaking of come to Jesus, her mom blesses her with that fucking hit. And so <laughs> so much so that it gave I like it triggered my PTSD from when I was a kid. My mom smacked the shit out of me. Like I twitched for the next 20 minutes of this movie. Like oh, it, it, <laughs> dude, this this scene had me shook for just for a minute. Like I had to gather myself and pause the shit. Like just throwing that out there. You ever been hit so hard by your parent that you don't even cry? 
Because that's what happened. She hit her so hard, like the tears wouldn't even come out. It was just all like, God damn. Like, did I just get rocked by Tyson? What yeah. happened? Yeah, it's you just can't. Shocking all. You can't cry because only because a hit like that jars your body. So only some of your senses work. <laughs> so the so the tears don't come out, but you can taste the hit. Like you get in so hard, you fucking tasted it. Like, why does my mouth taste like metal? I don't understand that shit. Like, that's what happened there. Monica, after this, gets a job at the bank where her dad works. As Q rehabs his knee, we get a montage of that. And Q sees Monica outside when she's coming back from work. And he goes over to talk to her. He tells her that he isn't having fun playing basketball anymore. And Mm. he's thinking about going back to school. And he asks her why she doesn't want to play anymore. And she tells him to just leave it alone. And again, this is another thing like feelings and words. And I'm just going to walk away because I don't want to say shit. But she wakes Q up here in the next night or two and tells him that she doesn't want to play because she doesn't have him with her. And this is where this is where I back Q because he loses his shit here on her. Because it's two weeks before his wedding. And he's like, you can't do that. I know I've been a dick in the past and I did some shit that I fucking regret. But I'm getting married in two weeks. You can't just pull this shit on me. So I kind of, for the first time since basically he breaks up with Monica, I'm on cue side here. I am not. And I'll tell you why. Exactly. One, she's not trying to do anything nefarious. She just, you're getting married, period. I'm letting you know this is how I feel, period. Which, by the way, if Q would have just let Monica know how she felt or how he felt back in college, they probably would have never broke up. That's so she's very doing true. exactly what she wanted him to do, which is just be fucking honest and talk about what the hell is going on with you. So I understand her needing to get that out getting it in the air, and then being done with whatever happens after that happens. It is what it is. Well, and <clears throat> in, the, in the hospital, though, Q actually says, listen, I reached out to you a couple of times, and mm-hmm. I, didn't, I didn't hear back from you, and left messages or whatever he says. And because she starts, you know, going in on their relationship, and he's like, like, he basically just says, it's been five years. Like, I reached out to you a couple of times. You didn't reach out back. I fucking let it go. That's why I'm on Q's side here. And I I can understand that, but I'm also going to say that it it's very easy for the person that fucked up to very quickly been like, oh, you got to get over this. It's been X amount of time. Like, that's always how it goes. And don't fucking tell me how long it takes to get the fuck over something. All right, because we never really talked about it. I'll you tell you what the fuck I want to tell you. So you need to That's shut right. the hell up. <laughs> you threw your little pussy ass tantrum because daddy cheated on mommy. You became the mirror image of daddy. Right? Fair, fair. And just fucking tossed me aside like I was fucking trash. So yeah, I didn't want to just catch up with you over the telephone. <laughs> <laughs> Go fuck yourself. This movie basically ends after this because... She challenges him to a game of one-on-one for his heart. It's it's close, but Q wins. He mean mugs her and gives her the whole... Whole span loving basketball, right? And then as she walks away, he says, double or nothing. And then they kiss. Flash forward to an L.A. Sparks WNBA game. Monica's the starting guard. Pan to the audience. Q's sitting there with, I'm assuming their daughter in the front row watching the game end of movie front to back i really love this movie as much as as much as omar epps's character was frustrating throughout this movie um that's a good thing it generated an emotion in me which was you're a you're a douchebag the the movie did what it's supposed to do um yes but the the writing was good the the Directing was good. Again, going back to the sports, the basketball shots, and actually getting people that looked like they knew how to play the sport. I mean, that's half the battle when you're doing a movie like this that heavily involves, yeah, that heavily involves sports. 
Um, so all of that was awesome. And again, there's a slew of amazing actors in this, and they mm-hmm. all do a great job throughout. Oh, yeah. Um, I think there was there's really one scene that I really fucking hated in this whole entire movie, which was when Q uh, and Monica are having their breakup or what their actual full on breakup. And she yeah. says, whatever I did, I'll fix it. I'm sorry. No. Like her obsession with him. Yeah. Just fucking dug at me the whole time. Cause it's like, you're so much better of a person than he is. Yeah. Like I get being in love with somebody, but sometimes people are dicks and they don't deserve it. So Corey, Corey, one issue. The heart wants what it wants. Okay. Leave the poor goddamn girl alone. No, (laughs) she needs to do what I say. We know, we know. Uh, (laughs) <laughs> but no, I I really did. I liked the whole movie. I think I think Q's decision at the end had less to do with love and was more of a strategic move because he realized Tyra Banks ain't gonna let him cheat on him. He knows Monica will. So if he wants to go out one night, he can. I don't and think Monica's that was. Gonna... I don't think that was the moral of the story. I think it was like they both love each other. And that's how this movie ends. But if you want to take it that way. You... Yeah, I basically took it like, oh, when there's a girl that loves you so fucking much and wants to devote her life to you that you've already cheated on one time, fuck it, man. Have a party. Go fucking bananas. That's You know what? That's why we're friends, because you got an evil fucked up brain, too. So hey, man, I can I'm just saying that. free herpes for everyone. <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> herpes for everyone. Take it. Oh, but all in all... Uh, This movie still holds up. I still really like this movie. Um, Everything was great. Like there is, again, there's a couple of like little things that I didn't like the blowing out of the knee, uh, a couple other things. But other than that, like this movie's still awesome. I, I, I had a good time watching this. Oh yeah, man. I love this movie. I love every single actor that's been in it. Like I'm legitimately a fan of every single actor in this movie. Um, It was good, and it's one of the better sports movies we've done because, like you yes. have said, everybody was believable. There was no fucking moron out there that's like, I'm an actor, and now I'm dribbling my basketball. <laughs> that guy did not exist in this movie. There were yeah. fucking ball players in it, and you could yeah. tell, uh, which I appreciated very much. Absolutely. All in all, man, it was it a was really good movie. I enjoyed it. I was glad, uh, glad it got requested. Yeah, absolutely. Me too. Do you have anything wish- else? I do. I actually wish we had came up with our new PayPal idea before this was requested because it got so many damn requests. <laughs> I know, right? But, uh, if you're just joining us, uh, uh, we went ahead and took a request from one of our viewers, our subscribers, and uh, went ahead and opened up a PayPal account. All you have to do is search for Kiss the Reviews. Link is below. Also, you can see it. It'll be uh, uh, actual clickable on our uh, show page. So, Go there, and if you have any movie requests that you are just dying to see us do immediately, throw us some cash. Uh, There is no kind of like set dollar amount. You do what you think we're worth to do that movie. It's not a big deal. No offense will ever be taken. And if you don't want to send us anything and you just want to make requests, keep going about it. That's totally fine, and we'll get to uh, those eventually. But if you want any kind of priority access, VIP. Uh, feel free to, uh, feel free to throw us some, uh, cash and we will get your shit done first and foremost. Absolutely. Well, if that's all you got for Corey, I'm Armando. This is Kiss the Reviews and this was 2000's Love and Basketball.